أحمد الله وأصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اقتربت الساعة والشق والشق القمر رب شح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحد الأقدة من لساني يشتري قوم اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وذبنا الطباء وأرنا الباطل باطلا وذبنا استنابا Today, inshallah, I will be sharing with you three historical miracles that are also, you can say, prophecies. So they're also scientific and they're also prophecies. What I mean by that is that the Prophet said something about the universe happened and that we would know, the Prophet says, you will find out about this later on. So, the first verse that I would like to share with you is of the nature, where the Qur'an tells us that of an event of the future that has to do with the coming of the Day of Judgment. And very few people are aware of this ayah in this sense. The Prophet Allah says, The hour has come near, meaning the Day of Judgment has come near. And what is the evidence or what is the sign that the hour has come near? The proof, the, the sign that the hour of the Day of Judgment has come near is that man has gone to the moon and dug out the moon rocks. This is what Quran says. Because shaqqa means, you know, to split. You know how when the Prophet pointed to the moon and the moon split, that's called fajr. Fajr. Fajr means to break. Shaqqa means to dig. Like, for example, these two words are used together in the Baqarah. And then your hearts, they became hard like stones after that. They became like stones or even more hard, more even more hard than stones. Indeed, even among stones, there are some stones that split and then water comes out of them. Like if they're in the middle of, you know, the running of water and soon the water will cut through the rock and the water will come through the rock. So the rock will be cut. So here the word is fajjara. وَإِنَّ مِنَ الْحِجَارَةِ لَمَا يَتَفَجَّرُ مِنْهُ الْأَنْهَارِ وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَشَّقَّطُ And amongst those rocks, there's some that a hole is put in them. Maybe the whole rock is not cut, but a hole, a small hole is put in them. A small hole is dug out from them. But, uh, uh, so Allah says, ثُمَّ قَصَدْ قُلُوبُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكْ فَهِيَ كَالْحِجَارَةِ أَوْ أَشَدُ قَسْوَةً وَإِنَّ مِنَ الْحِجَارَةِ لَمَا يَتَفَجَّرُ مِنْهُ الْأَنْهَارِ وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَشَّقَّقُ فَيُخْرَجُ مِنْهُ الْمَاءِ And then there are some water, some stones, that just a hole is made through it and then the water comes out the other side just from a hole, it's not split. So in this, when the Prophet pointed to the moon, this I want to make clear, the Bi'asa of Rasulullah, the prophethood of the Prophet has two levels. One is to the Arabs. The Prophet said in many narrations, he said, Inni ji'tu ilaykum, meaning the Arabs. I have come to you, O Arabs, khasatan, specifically. Wa ji'tu ila nasi kafatan, and I've come to all of humanity in general. When the Prophet split the moon, when he split the moon, or any other miracle the Prophet did amongst the Arabs, this was a hujjah on the Arabs. Or whenever any Prophet did any miracle, in his time, it was a hujjah for the people of his time. It wasn't a hujjah for the people after that time or of a different place. The miracle of the Prophet is a hujjah, is an excuse over them or is an argument over them for that time. 
So when the Prophet split the moon and they saw the moon on the east and the west, that was a hujjah for the people who saw the moon split. That was a proof against or a proof for the people that saw the moon split. But since Qur'an is for all mankind, and since the call of Qur'an is to all of mankind, the miracle that is being mentioned here is not the miracle of the splitting of the moon. Shaqqa means to dig out. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, consider that the hour wa is or qasam is to mean to consider this. Like Allah says, wa also. Consider the fast moving time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, consider that the iqtarabat is sa'ah. The hour has come even more near. Allah is saying, consider the hour has come even more near. When? When you will you will see that the moon has been dug out, because when when they went to the moon, what did they do? They got the moon rocks and they dug out a lot of the moon rocks and brought it to earth. And so this is one of the signs of the day of judgment. So I hope I was able to make clear the prophet pointing to the moon. That was a hujjah for the people of that time. This ayah is not talking about fajjara. Uh, it's talking about shakka. Shakka means to cut or it means to dig out. That's what it literally means. So when the Prophet split the moon, he didn't dig it. It wasn't dug out. It wasn't, it wasn't dug. It was cut. You can say, or it was split. For the word for that is fajr. Like when the, also, we say Salatul Fajr. Why? Because the darkness and the light cut into each other. So, in the same way, but in the opposite sense. Anyway, Allah says, Iqtarabat is sa'a, Iqtaraba qarb, qurb, qurb. Iqtaraba sa'a. Iqtaraba means the hour has brought, brought even more near. Why? al qamar. Because of that time. When the moon will be what? Dug out. Now, consider this because I'm going to tie two, three things to get three things together. The first thing I'm sharing with you is that the Quran is telling us of that day when the moon will be dug out. And while that is a great, you know, what did they say when they went on the moon? Uh, a a a uh, what what? what? First step. Right, a small, a small step, step for, 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 man, for a man. Small, a small, small step, step for a man, but a giant step. Yeah, for small a step for a man, but a giant leap. I think it was giant leap. Giant, giant, giant leap for mankind. But Quran is saying here, about this When you reach the moon, the hour is even more near. The day of judgment is even more near. And this is very interesting when you combine it with the other two that I'm going to give you. The signs of the prophecies that Allah gives because this is undeniable that the, when, if you look at the literal translation of the meaning of this it's undeniable that the Quran is talking about the digging out of the moon it's undeniable this is what the Quran is talking about then there's another verse that happened around the same time meaning in the, within the same hundred years another sign was shown but this sign was shown first this one that I'm about to show you. This happened, going to the moon happened when? In the 1960s, right? 1970s. 69. 1969. Meaning in the last 40, 50 years. But a hundred years ago, or I mean about, yeah, more, a little more than a hundred years ago, there was another sign that this is a sign for you that the age Another age is about to begin. Another time is about to begin. And that was the verse of the Quran in Surah Al-Yunus in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the body of the Pharaoh. Okay? About the body of... Why are these things of the future? There are three things of the future told in the Quran that are prophecies. Allah says basically, you will discover these things or you will do these things at a certain time. Why? I will discuss that. But let me just go over the three things first. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَالْيَوْمَ نُنَجِّيكَ بِبَدْنِكَ Today, Allah says, فَالْيَوْمَ Today, نُنَجِّيكَ I will save you. بِبَدْنِكَ In your badan. You know, what the word badan means body. But the word badan doesn't only mean body. The word badan means three different things. The word badanika means a small shield. You know, a small shield that they used to have when... He used to carry a small shield, basically. He had a sword and he had a small shield. When Fir'aun, the body was found, it was found with a small shield. His body was found, but with the body, the other meaning of the word badan means what? Shield. He was found with his body and he was found with his shield. And the third meaning of the word be badan, badan is also the seashore. You know, by the where the water ends and the land begins. So by the beach, by, but it, not exactly there, but not just that line, but that area. So Allah says, We will save your body, or we will save your small shield, or we will save you by the sea. We will save you by the sea. Now, I want to answer a very important question. How do we know that the Fir'aun we say, the Fir'aun that we say that drowned, how do we know that the body we have of the Fir'aun that died, that would drown, is the Fir'aun that we say he is? How? Because of this salt water content. Because the sea has what? The salt water content that is in the Red Sea would match the amount of salt water that is inside his body. This is why the whole world accepted, I don't know if you know this, but when the body was discovered, it was taken around the world. It was brought to America, it was taken to England, it was finally taken to France, and then from France, it was the Egyptians, and they tried to get it back to uh, Egypt. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says specifically now, we will save your body and we will save your little sword and we will save this air, you in this area why? so that you will be a miracle so that you will be a sign for the people who will come after I will save your body for that time when people will be endowed of Qur'an for that time where the world uh, when the world will talk about enlightenment for that time where people will say I don't know if this Qur'an is truthful Allah will bring out the body of Fir'aun to tell you that a new world order is about to start a new world order like the order that Fir'aun had where he was on top of the pyramid is about to start so the second thing that we found in the last 150 years was, number one, was the finding of the body of Fir'aun. And number two was the Qur'anic verse that says, man will go to the moon and the hour has come near. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَالْيَوْمَ نُنَجِّيكَ بِبَدْنِكَ لِتَكُونَ لِمَنْ خَلْفَكَ آيَةَ we will save your body today so you will be a ayah, a miracle, a sign for the people who will come after you. And then Allah says, وَإِنَّ كَثِيرًا مِّنَ النَّاسِ And among, there are definitely, most of the mankind is such, most of mankind is, أَنْ آيَاتِنَا لَغَافِلُونَ They are غَافِل, they're heedless of our signs that we give them. We give them the signs. The Fir'aun's body came out. That's a miracle. The Quran said it would come out. That's a miracle. Man went to the moon and dug out the moon. The Quran said it would happen. It's a miracle. But mankind is what? Mankind is heedless. Third thing that was discovered this century in World War I, which Allah says, this is in Surah Yasin and other places also, uh, وَآيَةٌ لَهُمُ الْأَنَّ حَمَلْنَا ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ فِي الْفُلْكِ الْمَشْكُونَ 
another sign that we will give them in that time that's very close to the end will be that we will show them the boat of Noah's Ark. They will find that boat because if Noah's Ark is true, that means Quran is true and what the Abrahamic faiths are saying is true. That there was a flood and there was a ship. And not only about, interestingly enough, that I will share with you something very interesting. Uh, if I can just for a second, uh, let me see if I can pull this out very quickly. Jim, while you pull that out, can I ask you a question? Yes. <clears throat> Getting to um, Ferron, when he died in the time of Musa al-Islam, wasn't he kept in a, as an example at that moment in time? The Quran says, Liman khalfaka. Khalaf means after. How much of course he was assigned for the people of that time, but right. you know, historically, I'll share with you something very interesting. When Fir'aun died, you know what the propaganda was? Now, this is not in the Bible, this is not in the Qur'an, this is what history tells us. This is what history tells us. When Fir'aun drowned, and they had to go back to their people, and tell them, some st they didn't want to give them the story that we lost. They had to give them some story that we, wa we won. So what they did is, they went back, and they told the people, the Fir'aun drowned, but we won. We routed the enemy. Because there was no way for them to, they're not going to go and cross the sea and go where Musa is going. When they went back, the political strategy was, amongst the family of Fir'aun, was to announce that Fir'aun was right. Fir'aun was right. Musa was wrong. We routed them out. Fir'aun gave his life, there will be a new Fir'aun. There will be a new new king. There's going to be a new king, but the thing that they had propagated in Egypt at that time was that we have won and Musa lost. That's what the people of that time knew. So, in that sense, it wasn't a sign for the people of Egypt, but the people that crossed with Musa and saw that it was a sign for them. But over here is... Al-Yawma, today, today, when you are drowning, after the, this ayah comes, after he says, Allah, okay, I believe you now, remember? When he says, uh, Al-An, Al-An, now, now, okay, yeah, okay, right, al -an, today I believe in you. So Allah says, no. Then Allah says, but what I will do with you, fa, means in response to something, but I will do for you this. I'm going to save your body, so that it is a sign for the people that will come after you. So his body was gone. It was not a sign for anybody until the body was thrown out from the sea and put back on land. And then they mum mum mummified it. And then after that, we discovered it in the Valley of Kings. It's called the Valley of Kings. There were okay. many kings uh, by the Right, and so the way know they know, like, no, 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 that's what I was saying, the way they know, uh, you know, if you go to Egypt, you can actually go to the museum where the pharaoh is there, the way that they know, and this was an important question for me too, uh, is that there are two, three things. Number one, at the very, we know that which pharaoh it is because of the salt water content in his body. That's the one of the biggest arguments of how we know which one it is. And they don't say that in the museum, but I've seen those bodies. They don't put two common body in the Cairo Museum. Maybe sometimes they will yeah. open a special exhibit, but mostly it's Ramesses and all the other bodies are lying there, basically. Right. So. Then the second thing is, is that because the, and this you'll like this argument, because the uh, Egyptians, they mummified all of their pharaohs, meaning they mummified all their pharaohs. So even if you have doubt, uh, well, did Allah save his body or not? There's no doubt that they had the tradition of mummifying the, bo the bodies of the pharaohs. Which is also important because the mummifying of pharaohs is not mentioned in the Bible as a side point. 
because uh, a lot of people try to say that we copied from the Bible, but this specific point that we will save your body, whether we know, even if we don't know where the body is, but we know that all of them are mummified, so therefore it's saved by that very process. So, uh, I mean, like, they have all of the pharaohs that have, in that time period where Musa والسلام, was, all of the pharaohs of that time period are mummified, every single one. And because you mentioned this, I'll tell you another thing that's very interesting. That when they dug out the grave, and the one, so the one reason we know, probably, that it is Fir'aun is the salt water content. The other reason is, I wasn't going to go into these details, but since you brought it up, it's important. The other reason we know is because where his grave was dug up, the tome, his tome, had on it the Pharaoh who defeated the Israelites. That was written on that tome. And it, it's a historical record. So you're talking about Tutankhamun, or you're talking about some yeah, other Pharaoh? No, Pharaoh is a title, okay. right? Uh, I do know the name, but I just don't remember it right now. If I remember the name, right, right. There's yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean that's that's and it is scary. If you look at him, he's scary too. <laughs> Have you seen the picture? I just find out that. Christian or American, Christian or American, I don't know. They are really, really scared of mummies. I mean, I don't know what real mummies they are. What? what? Yeah, there's a lot of, uh, okay, so the, basically uh, the rumor is that whoever goes into pyramids, uh -huh. some bad luck happens to him. And this is, historically it seems to have happened. That whoever has done excavations around the pyramids, you know about? Did yeah. you know about this? It was the current huh? yeah, Tutankhamun. Huh? All the, all the people who first excavated the mummy, like, died. Yeah, all the people that ever go and excavate the pyramids, they end up dead. We don't know why. And so they believe they're, you know, these mummies are cursed and the pyramids are cursed. And I've been in the, the pyramid of Giza all the way up. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been inside Giza. Did you open a mummy? No, no, no. Back to the argument about the mummies, it doesn't make a difference which mummy it is, as long as they're all preserved that way. Right, that was what I just said. Right, basically it doesn't make a difference which one it is. Right. Yeah, because I did a lot, I have a lot of research on this issue. Particularly the, the preserving of the, a lot. I mean, so... Back to my initial question was that at the time of the Prophet, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi came about, the Quran came about, these ayahs came about, there was, a, there was quite some time from Musa time period to Musa time period. In that time period, now it's mentioned in the Quran that that body will kept preserved. But in that time period, it was already preserved. Preserved in the But nobody knew about it. But nobody knew about it. They were at the value of the king that nobody knew where the value of kings were. What? But there was, there must have been a group of people that passed that generation to generation until it faded away or became a folktale. That there was a story, that was a body there. So it, there were stories actually, because there were grave diggers who would go right. and loot all this stuff. Very few of those graves were all actually left that they could excavate. Most of the graves actually were already like uh, looted and plundered. Right. So, uh, like I said, the grave that has we defeated the Israelites and the seawater content is the one that we think is the one that was, and I forget his exact name. So, two things I've given you so, three things I've given you so far. One is the Quranic prophecy that man will go to the moon and what? Dig it. Okay. Iktarabat al saa wa shafq al qamar, and when the moon is dug out. Second prophecy given in the Quran is al yawm nunajika bi badnika. Today, oh, and also bi badnika, the the shield that I refer to is also Badan because not it's so interesting that you know you say that because what makes it interesting is okay if we don't suppose we don't know which mummy is the Firaun's body but because Quran uses the word be Badanika right it there it was only one body of Firaun that had that shield in his hands and that was that body of the Firaun that was that had the seawater content in it so, so I hope you're able to make these connections that I'm saying. So that Fir'aun's body was found in the beginning of the, not this century, but the previous, the 19th century, the end of the 19th century. 
the body of Fir'aun was discovered. Then this last previous century, the man went to the moon and the moon was dug out. And then in the last 10 years, we have the verified information about the, the boat of Nuh والسلام, on Mount Judi. By the way, one of the differences between the Bible and the Quran is the, the Bible says the, ma the boat is on Mount Arafat, uh, Ararat. Ararat. Ararat is the name of the mountain. And the Quran says the boat is on Mount Judi. And the boat that they have found on Mount Judi, which is basically between Turkey and Russia, this area. And it's mostly, uh, the boat is on a hill, on a mountain. It's about seven football fields long. The boat is seven football fields long. I can show you the pictures. What is left is the base. Huh? The only thing left in that picture is really new. You can only see a base. And you can only see the base when it's least snowing. But they have done even more research now where, where they've gone a little bit beyond the base. They have found the anchors of the boat, you know when you throw anchors in the water. So they found the anchors of the boat. And it's a very, very, very big boat. And it's there on Mount Judi. So again, the Quran specifically says Mount Judi. Quran specifically tells us that it's a boat and that it landed on a mountain. And so therefore, this is the only boat that fits the description. Yes? Huh? They have done uh, some carbon uh, testing. The thing is, it's very hard to get there. And uh, so there hasn't been, I don't know anything about the results of that. Okay, But I do know that they, they have gone, scientists have gone there at least two, three times now to uh, actually measure things out. They've used satellite imaging to get a better image of the boat. So all those things are happening. And inshallah, as time goes by, even more will, because when this information first came out, it was the 19, the late 1980s, when the first of this image, when, when they, it was discovered in World War II, when Russian army was going from Russia into, yeah, you can pass this around. Uh, if you want to pass this around, you can pass it. Did you already look at it, all of you? I have. Yeah. Yeah, if you can go around and show the boat to everybody. So here, let me show you this. This is the boat. It's on the mountain. And actually, over here, you know where these spots are? This is where they have the, um, uh, they have like holes for uh, the anchor and stuff. that the flood happened throughout the whole world. And scientifically, that's not true. The flood only happened in Iraq, this area. And how do we know that? Because in the ground, you have the fossils, like in mid-city. Makes sense now. Okay. All the arguments against religion, all these people, it boils down to the news story. But if they claim that it only happened in a small part of our land, then, then everything is fine. But they are going crazy hogging the entire, uh, you know, whatever animal that can go on one boat. And that is what this is. Oh, yeah, I'll also add, let me explain that. What hey, does it mean? Epiphany. What does it mean? Yes, what does it mean that Noah put a pair of every animal in the boat? What does it mean? He took every ant, every cockroach, every mice and put a pair of them in the boat and took it with him? He took every lion? No, it doesn't mean that. It means that he took every pair of every animal amongst the tame animals that he had in his livestock. So that when he settles, 
lifestyle. His lifestyle. His like if he had, let's say, I don't know what he had, but if he had horses, hens, cattle, goat, sheep, whatever was in his house, he would take a pair of them so that when he lands in the new place, he can begin, he has something to start with in terms of, and because there wouldn't be that many animals after that flood. So he would have to preserve certain of those animals that are tame for himself and his family. But I wanted to say the biblical story is that the flood happened, this is where? In the Bible. The Bible says the flood happened around the world. Quran does not say this and, and scientific evidence also does not support that. Why? Because the, the fossils that are found where the, the fish, you know, the, the, the seawater, the content that's in the sea is from between the reefs. So, for example, everyone agrees, and by the way, this is the other side, all the traditions agree that some flood happened. It's in the Hindu traditions, Mahanu, they believe Mahanu came on a boat, and then settled in India. This, in fact, this whole uh, the Brahman is from Ibrahim. I don't want to go into all of that, but they believe in Mahanu. The first man was a man who came on the boat. This is what the Hindus believe. Then the Japanese also have the even the first human story. The, you know what is the name of the first human story on record? I you must no. There's one before that. Odyssey. Odyssey. Written by Homer. Homer. Homer has the story of Noah's flood in it. And of course it's in the Christian tradition, it's in the Jewish tradition, it's in the Islamic tradition, it's in the Hindu tradition, it's in the Buddhist tradition, it's in the Japanese tradition, it's in, uh, it's in all sorts of traditions. Uh, there's, if you lift this up in Wikipedia, look up uh, uh, religions that believe in Noah's Ark and you'll get like a list of 20-30 religions and civilizations that have this story of Nuh the point of this is that if it was just in Quran maybe somebody can say maybe yes or no but if there's so many people of human beings that said this event happened then it most likely did happen and most likely is correct but the difference between the biblical version and the Quranic version is that the, the Bible specifically says that it happened around the globe. Quran does not say it happened around the globe. But it was just a local phenomenon. And it also makes sense from this perspective. That, that, that punishment only comes to the people that were... A prophet comes like to Luth, to the people of Luth. And the people of Luth deny him. Who will get destroyed? The whole world? Only the people of Luth will get destroyed. Right? So in the same way, when the... When, when Nuh والسلام, was denied by his people, the people that were to be blamed and the people that were guilty were the people of who? The people of Nuh So in the same way with Saleh, in the same way with Thamud, with Hud, with all of them, what happened? A prophet goes and only those people die that the prophet is sent to. In the same way Nuh only his people were killed. Nobody, not everybody around the world. Yes. How long ago was the flood? Like I always worry about that. Like was it like ten thousand years ago? There is a, a scientific answer to that question. It's actually very interesting because when they date, you know, like uh, there was water in a lot of places that don't have water. For example, Arizona. Yeah. You know, the Grand Canyon was all water. And uh, same thing. This whole place from Iraq to Turkey was all water at one time. Now their dates, I don't have that at hand. But that would be interesting to see because uh, of a lot of other reasons. So anyway, so these three miracles that the Quran brings forward that have specifically... What is the first is moon? The second is... So the first is that Allah, will, Allah said that man will go to the moon and dig out the moon. Like bring the moon rocks to earth. And Allah specifically says this is a sign that the hour has come near. Meaning the day of judgment has come here. The second is the founding of the body of Pharaoh, which happened in the 18th, the late like 1860s or 1870s. I forget the. Don't have. I'm not good with numbers and things like that. So it happened in the late 18th 
uh, in the late, later part of the 18th century, where the body of Fir'aun was discovered, meaning the man with the small shield in his hand and the salt water content in his body and the thing written on his grave, he was victorious over the Israelites. So that Fir'aun, finding his body, Allah says, will be a sign for the people to come. Now, so what is happening is over time, you know, there's two, three things that I want to mention here. Uh, again, I don't want to, because I, sisters are requesting to uh, do something special, but uh, let me just mention this. There are two types of signs, you can say. One is like scientific sign. For example, Quran says, uh, Quran, uh, one is we can verify Quran says this and it's scientifically correct. But one is Quran says this will happen in the future and you will find this to happen in the future. It's a prophecy, it's eschatology. So in a sense, eschatology is really very powerful, even more than scientifically, because for science you can say, for example, the stages of embryology. When, when Allah says you were a nutfa, then alaqa, alaqa is when the when the womb, uh, when the placenta, you know the placenta? Yeah. When the placenta is on the womb of the mother and taking the nutrition from the mother. You know, ikra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq, khalaq al-insana min alaq, ikra, this alaq generally translated as a clot of blood. But you can say it is not just a clot of blood. It's actually, alaq means mu'allaqa, you know mu'allaquna? Yes. Which is mu'allaqa. Suspend it. So, आपके ऊपर कोई चीज मुअल्लक हो गई है और फिर वो वो जो है माँ से जो है वो it's taking the nutrition so it's the placenta it's the lodging of the placenta on the womb of the mother from where she takes the nutrition so anyway the point I'm trying to make is I can show scientific miracles of the Quran but particularly important are prophecies of the Quran where where Quran says this will happen in the future. You will find the body of Fir'aun, for example. Or the Qur'an says, you will go to the moon and dig out the moon. Or the Qur'an says, you will find the, bo the, the boat of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. These are absolutely historically undeniable. Where is the Qur'an where you will Where is the Qur'an where you will Where is the Qur'an where you will find the boat of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam? It's mentioned in Surah Yaseen and it's also mentioned in Surah Yaseen it says, وَآيَةٌ لَهُمْ أَنَّا حَمَلْنَا ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ فِي الْفُلْكِ الْمُشْحُونَ And a miracle for them will be, or a sign will be for them, that the way that we carry these people of... Yes, Yasin, maybe a orjana may be had. In one place, I just forget where it is, but in one place in the Qur'an it says, we will make it an ayah for you, in this sense. That we have made it an ayah, or it is a sign for you. So this is there in the Qur'an. Like, clearly is the just as, you know, for the body of Fir'aun, it says, we will save your body. Heard, I've, I've heard. And then also going to the moon, it says, you will dig out the moon. Right. In the same way for the, the boat of Nuh, it says, we will make it a sign for the people. Ayat al nas I think, is, is the words. Just like when Isa wasalam, finally comes. But what happens is, Quran is expo expanding its miracles more and more. It's very, very interesting because... Uh, Anyway, I don't want to take too much time up at this point, but I did want to share something, depending upon who is here. No one, I was thinking, is no one's here that I thought, uh, there was something I wanted to share, but that's okay, don't worry about it. Um, no, 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 I was looking for the kids that were in Itikaf with me today. I don't know where they're going. Huh? Yeah, bring them in, I need them for a second. I'm going to share something very so that's a miracle for their people, right? right? Just like the 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 Asa of Musa was a miracle for their people. So why was a camel a miracle? Like you know, that I could I read like that part, but I couldn't understand. Because they said we want to see a miracle, and he said, okay, a camel will come out of this wall. That's what it was. Like I, that's what I got out of it. So a camel came out of the mountain. Right. And uh, that was put as a miracle for them. Right, okay. Well, it doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't say in the Quran that the camel came out of the mountain. Like, that's in Hadith. Yeah, yeah, that's an explanation in Hadith. So, uh, yes, please come forward. I will have uh, some people talk about some things that I think you will find interesting also. Uh, come on over here.
Why am I the only one coming towards you? I don't know. You're the only one here. Today, they're going to tell you. Today, uh, last night, between last night and today, I think uh, we had some nice discussions about uh, Prophet Muhammad in the Bible with the youth. Uh, and uh, so I'm just gonna, I just want all of them to share with you some of the things that they discovered from the Bible about Prophet Muhammad being in the Bible. We spent, I, I think, maybe a few hours uh, doing this. You can turn off the camera now.